is Sydney's northern beaches. It's a playground for sun lovers. <laughs> where every day is a celebration. Northern beaches, go on. That keeps the cops busy. Go away. Get out of my face, please. In your face. So when things get too hot... Don't you? I told you all the information I need to know. They've fallen in the uh, blowhole at Warriwood. Whilst we were dealing with these guys, he's been bottled. $550 fine, that one. These cops keep it cool. What they were doing, they were making homemade bombs and letting them off. What brings you to the Northern Beaches? This is sick. <laughs> this is ice pipe. So at this stage, you're under arrest. So where are you injured? Just your hand. Keep your pants on, because it's really not impressive. Welcome to their world. All right, guys. Let's get going. This is Beach Cops. Okay, hey, and they've told you you're not getting in. Oh, End reason? of story. Oh, End of story. Reason? You're arguing with me, but I'm, I'm explaining it all. You are arguing. Did you see something wrong with me? You're being oh. argumentative. So, the taxi ranks down that way. I'd highly recommend you get in the first cab that you find and leave, OK? Watch your head. Take a big step. Big step. Good boy. Oh, my God. It's Saturday night, and Leanne and Maddie have decided to patrol the harbour side of Manly. We thought we'd check out Hugo's and around that area, because there's usually a lot of um, alcohol-fueled people hanging around. Uh, walk around the corner, and we see a guy urinating against the seawall. Urinating? Oh, how disgusting. What's good? Hey, mate. Hey, come here. <laughs> My name's Constable Dorazok from DY Police, and this is Constable Payton. OK, what are you doing on the beach? What were you doing on oh, the beach? I cut my foot. Oh, he reckons he cut his foot, and that's why he was down there. And then when I asked him where he cut his foot, he then said he cut his foot further up. Where? Where'd you cut your foot? Um, uh, I saw so he obviously had a bit too much to drink to keep his story straight. And then you went down there and had a pee? Uh, wash it. Did you piss on it? And then you pissed up here? We saw you. So you know it's an offence to urinate in public? Yeah. And that's why he did it just then? Not a good time, man. And then in the end, he did admit to urinating on the beach, but claims he was unaware that it's an offence to urinate in public. All right, there's your licence pack. Thank you. What does this mean? This is the official warning, and because you're intoxicated, I can smell it, you stink. I want you to go home now, OK? I'll go home. Yeah, all right, good boy. Get your shoes and go home. All right. All right, bye. So uh, while my partner, Maddie was dealing with the guy who was urinating on the wall, um, I looked up, and there's a guy doing push-ups completely naked. It's not funny, mate. It's pretty offensive. And although his friends think it's funny, these cops aren't so impressed. So it's not a regular Saturday night thing? So within about two minutes, I got to see a man urinate and then another man be fully naked doing push-ups and bending over backwards facing me. So it was a horrible view. And it seems every Tom, Dick and Harry wants a piece of the action. I've actually had two years of acting experience. Okay, I was you. on Shawshank Redemption. Oh, so good job. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Northern Beach is cool. You the lights? Step off. You can get charged, mate, for obscene exposure. He's pretty drunk and he seemed to think that it was an OK thing to do. Push-ups, naked, manly, 11 o'clock on a Saturday night. There's people and children still out coming home from dinner. Do you think that parents and their kids want to see that type no, of behaviour? I'm going to give you an intoxicated move on direction from Manly. OK, I don't want to see this type of behaviour tonight. I don't want to see you tonight. $550 it cost him to get naked. Hmm. Keep your pants on, because it's really not impressive. Okay. Have a nice So that's what we're here for. It's the very little jobs. You know what's the worst part about that? You were already up to him, and I was still walking. <laughs> and my instinct was, run a... run. Yeah, my oh. instinct was, <laughs> run away. There's a butthole in front of you. Done the cat. Jeff and Matt are off to visit a man who's found out something terrible about the recent death of his beloved cat, Elvis. Hi, sir, you're Tom, are you? Yes, I am. It happened on Saturday night. I found out about it on the Sunday morning. Um, my neighbour came by and called out saying that Elvis, uh, who's the cat, um, was in the gutter. I, uh, I thought that perhaps that he had been hit by a car, so I then buried him. I had two young people come at the door, and they felt they had to tell me something. 
So we just spoke to the homeowner here and he's um, just told us that he found his cat dead out the front of his house. He was, uh, he was lying. Um, lying on the side of the road. He's uh, picked the cat up and buried it in the front yard. It wasn't until a couple of days later um, some witnesses have come forward and said they've seen a um, young man kick the cat on Saturday night and caused its death. You know, I just seen if there's any blood around a couple of days, it's probably faded. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's really hard to fathom what's going through the head of a young man who thinks it's okay to go up and, and kick a cat and um, cause injuries that would actually cause the death of the cat. We're pretty confident that we um, know who the person was that uh, did this to the cat. Elvis uh, was a very friendly sort of cat. But young and old, he'd always come up to, to someone and um, drop to the floor and expect a little rub on the belly. And... He even showed various Christmas cards that some of the neighbourhood kids have sent to the cat. Um, so it's quite well known in the area. So it's aggravated um, cruelty to animals. It's quite a serious offence. So it's treated very serious by the courts and by, by the police. Thanks very much. Oh, thanks Thank you. Good. Our next step would be to go around and speak to this young man and see what he has to say about himself. It's just part of the brief. Back at the station, a conversation with the RSPCA has recommended they dig up poor old Elvis for x-rays to see how he died. By putting him in like that. The vet will determine it. So now it means a trip back to the owner's house with the unpleasant news. Oh, hello there, Tom. Sorry about this. Look, as a pet owner, I've had um, many cats in my life and dogs, and I can um, relate to uh, how he's feeling right now. Um, they, they become very valuable uh, parts of the family, and I really feel for, uh, for this man, man um, losing his cat. Yeah, very sorry to do this all for you, but it's, um, yeah, as I said, it's really the only sort of way we got to the evidence to prove that there is something that's actually happened, so. Yeah. Okay, Thank I'll be in, you. in touch. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thank you. The results from this x-ray will help determine the cause of Elvis's death. And sadly, it's as expected. Right over there, there is a, a potential fracture um, in that frontal bone. A massive kick to the head. Um, with what we're seeing there, then, then that really consistent. correlates. That's consistent, yeah. And now they need to bring the teenager in for a chat. During the interview, the young person admitted to me that he kicked the cat with enough force that it actually launched it into the air. So it's looking like he's going to uh, be charged with aggravated cruelty to animals under the Crimes Act, and that carries some quite serious penalties, a maximum of uh, five years jail. Hopefully he'll understand what he's done. There's been quite a few consequences from that, from both his school and um, in his personal life. So hopefully he'll learn a lesson and change his behaviour. Patrolling 20 kilometres of coastline means that sometimes there's trouble in the water. And today, one of those calls has come in for Ethan and Brendan. In the water, near the rock, towards around the aquarium. Can I just get a confirmation? Is the drowning victim, is the person deceased or are they just struggling in the water? He's conscious and breathing, but it says he's still in the water. All emergency services in the area are called in to help. But luckily for this guy, some kids have got to him first. So basically I was just with my friend Isabella and we were just walking down towards Manly. I saw a man on his back floating, uh, two young kids down near the rocks trying to call out to him. I could see they were quite young, so I've just gone down to help him out. Um, he basically slipped. Uh, we don't know if he's hit his head, but we do know that he was responding. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good on you. So he's one lucky fisherman that these kids spotted him and came to his rescue. And I'm glad that these young guys are actually part of the... What are you guys part of again? The... Uh, we do surf rescue. Surf rescue, and I've basically done my first aid course, so we know us, all of us together are able to do the basic, normal, save someone's life kind of thing. Do you have pain here? He's on the rocks. He's witnessed a fall in. Can you do this? I'm known he can involve me. No, no. I, I was feeling very shaky. I was very, I was very worried that he was going to go under because I, because he was quite a heavy man, and um, yeah, it was just very scary. Uh, he kept, you know, touching his head, which I kind of thought might have been, you know, uh, in shock or something. 
he had a, a hook um, lodged in his um, ankle area and he was trying to pull it out but we were just telling him just to leave it in there and and let the paramedics come and take it up for him. Can you do this? Good, okay. Could have been a lot worse from what the Ambos are saying. It sounded like he's taken a bit of fluid into his lungs as well, so 100%. If it wasn't for those kids, that gentleman would have, would have died today. Hi, Tiona, it's Constable Buco from Northern Beaches. Police, how are you going? And in true Aussie style, these kids just take it all in their stride. Just ringing you to let you know, he's just been involved in an incident down at Manly Beach, OK? He's done something pretty cool. He's dragged a, a drowning rock fisherman in from the water and pretty much saved his life, so... Hi, Mum. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. The man's very lucky today. A lot of fishermen have been killed from fish rocking, whatever it's called. Um, didn't catch any fish today, but that's all right, so... Caught himself. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Like... Sweet little ass cabby stuff, man. <laughs> You're loving it, eh? Yeah. Taking all the red runs, mate. I'd die with you in the car. What do you mean? <laughs> You've never even seen me. It's six o'clock on Saturday evening, and Alana and Dan are going lights and sirens to a car accident. Just follow the highway car to it. I'm trying. This guy doesn't have any guts. <laughs> Bloody diesel. A drunk driver has lost control of his ute and ended up teetering two metres above a creek. Because he's crashed. So, and then passengers still, still trapped. As they arrive at the scene, emergency services are already there. We just arrived at an accident here. Um, the driver's left the vehicle. There's still one passenger inside. The driver is currently being conveyed back to French Forest Police Station for a breath analysis. Uh, fire rescue have just uh, arrived here on scene now. They've got a big cable on board. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to attach the cable underneath the car because it's unstable, uh, wrap it around one of the trees in the area to stabilise the car and then try and lift the car up from where it is. Back at the station, the driver has blown well over the limit, but the focus here is getting the passenger out of the car before it nosedives into the creek. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite dangerous where it is. So it's in, we're trying our best now to get that person out of the car. What, he's gone this way and then jumped or something? Straight after the accident, the driver got himself out of the car, leaving his partner behind. He's gone, so he's climbed over the top of her and left her there. We're going to start moving back, guys. Yeah, the emergency services have got some metal blocks. Um, they're going to be putting them under the front of the car to try to stabilise it so they can try and get the passenger out of the front seat. With the car now fully supported, they can start to get the woman out. And there's quite a crowd watching on. It's a quiet street, so most of the residents have come out to the street to see what's going on. Um, we're just pushing them all back because there is a winch attached. Um, we don't want that snapping and obviously causing any injury to anyone. It's a delicate operation, but slowly and surely, they get the woman out. She seems uninjured, but is clearly shaken. So paramedics will take her to hospital for a checkup. So you can see down there, there's a vodka bottle. Looks like it's fallen out of the car uh, when he's exited the vehicle. So no wonder he's, he's gone, he's gonna go high or, or mid-range by the looks of it. Um, there's the alcohol in the car itself. So but as you can see, the car's just um, suspended. It could have been a lot worse, they're lucky. And the sound of the impact brought people out of their houses. I was inside and we were about to eat dinner and there, it sounded like a massive explosion. It was really scary. There was a guy who was climbing over his wife trying to get out of the car. After he got out, he fell back on his back. I think he really hurt himself because it sounded really bad. So the, the owner of the car has shown up, who's also the driver at the time. He's, uh, he's quite upset, obviously, with the damage that's happened to his car. He's come straight from the station, where he was charged and had his driver's licence disqualified on the spot. You got your court papers and all that sort of stuff? I will take my licence to Prentice Forest Police Station as well. OK. And there's one more blow coming his way. Uh, it's going to be a costly error for him, uh, because Insurance doesn't cover these accidents when, when alcohol is involved, when they're charged with these offences. So what'll happen now, he'll just have to foot the bill for all of this, so it's a costly error for him.
Jeff and Blake have spotted a pea plater with a broken tail light. His driving's a bit erratic. Drew my attention the way he pulled yeah, out Yeah, when he came out, I thought the exact same thing to you, the truth. And it seems it's a long way from home. Copy, thanks, Radio. Kenley Vale. We went over up here, this straight stretch. Do you want to breath test him as well? Yeah. Okay, driver, how are you today? Thanks, Mate, you? good, good. The reason you've been pulled over is your left hand brake light's not functioning correctly. Oh. You got your driver's license on you? Uh, all right. You had any alcohol at all today, Paul? Count the 10 towards the machine, mate. One. What are you doing over here if you're from Kenley Vale? Dropping a mate off, are you? Do you have anything with your details on it at all? Drive lost or something? Hmm? I just didn't know who I'm speaking to, that's all. Pulled this big over for a traffic stop. Uh, as I'm speaking to the passenger, he's become quite cagey and looking quite concerned. Mo, you had dealings with police before in the past? Many a times. I asked him what his name is, he said, why do you need us? I didn't know who I'm talking to. Are you wanted for anything or beach is four five for two C nice? And a radio check on the passenger has turned up some interesting information. Just watch him, he's well known. Uh, I've done a check, I decided to search him and his vehicle. Do you have anything on you now that you shouldn't have? Cars, Nothing in the car. Yeah. Keep your hands out of your pockets, just exit the vehicle. All right. Throw your hands up on the wall, don't reach into your pockets at any time. Hey, just turn over here, mate. Turn around. Turn around the wall. Again, Just spread your legs for me. Got okay, anything in your pockets? Just coins, is that it? Do you have any on you at the moment? What's that? Oh, that's mate, just come take a seat for me down here on the footpath. Do you have anything on you you shouldn't have? No, I don't. Three arms. The reason you're being searched, obviously, old mate, he's got yeah. pot on him. We have reasonable suspicion to believe there's more in the vehicle. Is there anything in the vehicle that you shouldn't have? All right, just go sit next to your friend there. Cross your legs, don't get up. All right, who owns this? That's yours, what's in it? Syringes, any other drugs? You've obviously been using quite extensively. Is this what you are talking about or is there something else? There's something else. And it doesn't take too long to find it. Who's ice pipe? Yours? We've we found a Tupperware container uh, containing some what we believe to be cannabis. Also, we've found in the passenger side door case, blue wetsuit material pencil case, containing 10 individual baggies of uh, cotton that have been soaked in ice, and that's what the passengers told us anyway. Um, we've also found an ice pipe, uncapped syringes, and that's all we found in the vehicle at this time. So along with the cannabis found on the passenger, these boys are in a bit of trouble and the driver has one more confession. Just look at his eyes before, they're a bit glazed. Mm. The driver's been smoking cannabis today. He's obviously committed an offence of driving under the influence of a drug. So here we go back to the hospital for a drug test. That drug test came back negative and he was free to go. But the passenger, well, he got charged with possessing an illegal drug. Jason are on the hunt for a missing smartphone. The owner lost the phone in Worrywood yesterday, but the tracking app has the phone being used at a sports ground 14 kilometres away. I think we're going to be too late. But we'll see. Well, we're here at Narawina today because a victim um, called us stating that he's, he lost his phone. To the west, is that right? There's a Find My iPhone application on his laptop, and it stated that it's here at Narawina. They know it's yep, on the oval right. somewhere, no, but they need the, the owner to help track it. OK, Macintosh is to the west, is that right? Phones are, are precious to people. They have, you know, their life's contents on them as well. So we treat it, you know, pretty seriously. The owner can see the phone pinging on his computer and is trying to relay directions to Jason. Yeah, we just need a, a really accurate description of where you're talking about. But it's proving difficult to find. Yeah, he's saying that it's pinging right where we are now. I'll have a look in the tennis club. Yep. They've got the owner to keep calling the phone. Where is it? 
and jackpot. Is this yours? Yeah, that's yours. Where, where, who's is it? Actually, Oh, you found it. Oh, where did you find it? So someone um, called us up saying that they found they've got a, an iPhone up which finds their iPhone, and they've traced it to here. So good outcome, perfect. No worries. What well, get you found it? Uh, the uh, when we walked in there and, uh, and saw the old fellas around the phone. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't think I was in for a foot pursuit. We'll say, <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> Sorry? Where, where did you find it? I found it at Warrior Wood. Oh, right here. I belong to the uh, Veterans um, University of the Third Age Movie Club at Warrior Wood, and every alternate Wednesday we have a movie. And when I went in before the movie started, that was on the floor. Yeah, and I picked it up, and I didn't know what to do with it really. Oh, I'm clueless on phones. I really am. But well, I'll bring it up here today. And Tony knows all about mobile phones. And uh, so that's what I did. I said, bring the phone to tennis and I'll sort it out and I'll contact the owner. Oh, perfect. You know, everyone's, you know, competency with technology is going to be a bit different. And uh, in this case, the guys at the, at the tennis courts uh, didn't really know how to get in touch with the owner or operate the, the phone. No worries. All good. For future reference, whatever your closest police station is, just give it to us yeah, and we, okay. we can locate the owner pretty easily. Right. So. Well, by the way, we only had one beer each. <laughs> <laughs> John had two. No worries. All right, well, enjoy your afternoon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now all that's left is to return the phone. Good result. We've got this victim's phone. You have it. No, I gave it back to you. Did you? No, no you were holding it. No, you remember how you were holding it? In the, uh... Mate, what have you done with the phone? I swear for my life that you were holding it when you were being oh, questioned. Where it's going in here. You're a dickhead. I know. You I'm are a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs>